Motendo and Life Death Part 1. We're going to be talking all about that today. X-Men 97, we have been loving. It has been cooking. Mr. Tim Costello, how are you doing today, sir? Great, great. Excited to talk about these episodes. Oh, uh, yeah. I can't wait as well. Let's get right into the very first episode, Motendo, which was a video game-centric episode featuring our favorite firecracker, Jubilee. Uh, what were your thoughts on Motendo, Tim? I'll, I'll say right out that I was expecting um, more of the uh, of the 16-bit animation. Ooh, yes, and, yes. I mean, I liked what we got, don't get me wrong, but I, I was wanting, like, the because the way this episode was described is Jubilee enters a 16-bit video game and on her birthday, like, well, that sounds amazing. And, I mean, there were some. There were some animation of... Of that, of those old video games, X Men: Children of the Atom being one. Uh, oh was, man, I love that game. Yeah, there was a couple of other ones. Um, the but arcade, yeah. the X Men arcade game. Oh man, that it was. There was a couple arcade games, Tim. I, I'm going to take you back in time, back to my childhood. The Simpsons, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They had two different versions. Those Turtles in Time, and then the the first Turtles game, and then the X Men right. arcade game. All of those, it was. There's other people like it was a co-op experience like you just you and a <laughs> bunch of strangers or sometimes your friends would just put in pump in the quarters and you're just going at it. And I loved both of those. The X-Men one in particular was cool because they had the single screen version, which was most of the time. That's what you would see. But in certain arcades like the the higher end or the fancier arcades, they would have the double screen our uh, ah, arcade yes, cabinet yes, and, yeah. and you had like six people and it was like oh if you could get all six people going at the same time although at that point it's like oh man somebody the chances of somebody having your favorite character are a little bit higher especially because everybody wants to be wolverine but um i had a yeah. ton of fun on those games but you know what that's a great point tim i also i watched it twice because i watched it with my wife a second time <laughs> and i I felt like there could have been a lot more of the 16 bit. The problem with this episode, having two, you kind of short change each one. Cause you only have half the episode length sure, sure. to do a full thing. So the 16 bit, I feel like if this was a full episode, a full 30 minutes, we would have gotten more in that mojo world, which also that was a great callback to the original X-Men series. When they had that episode yeah. where they went into mojo world and, uh, they did the whole TV thing. Now it's like, okay, let's do the video game thing and, and putting it in terms of a video game. But the animation was fantastic. Like I could not, like I thought it was the video game. I thought it was a 16 bit video game I was looking at. Yeah. So yeah. And, and, I, and they had the little side screens too. Yeah. Was, yeah. Was great. Yeah. Right. They had it's the, not 16 by nine. Yeah. yeah. They had the 16 by nine screen in the middle. And then you had the, you know, the little graphics on, on the side, which, you know, a lot of arcade video games. I'm not a huge gamer, but I still remember playing those games and sucking at them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, so that, so that was, that, that was kind of cool. Uh, to, yeah, to, I love to see that. Those. And yeah. like I said, it was just, it reminded me a lot of Scott Pilgrim. It reminded me a lot yeah. of like changing the animation style and kudos. I, I wish it was some type of behind the scenes thing that I could watch on this of how did they do that? Like that animation specifically was fantastic. You know, with the MCU I, stuff, they all often come out with those assembled documentaries. Yes, I hope, which I love. And they did yeah. do one for What If, I think for both seasons. Ooh, and, um, okay. and I would like to see a, um, a version for this. Yes, if, if 100%. It. Especially since it's like the, um, what's it called? A Marvel animation now. That's a whole separate thing. I'd love to have like a Marvel animation assembled. That would be great. I would love to see this. But man, I, I had a ton of, of fun with this, all the video game stuff. And Jubilee being like the perfect avatar. She's the right age. This is the right time period, the 90s. Like everything fit for Jubilee. Sunspot, I feel like, was just kind of tagging along. And to the yeah, point of like, there. yeah, there. and how long are we going to get with him not using his powers? I want to see Sunspot go off. There was, I thought that he didn't use them at all, but then 
as I watched it the second time, I was like, oh, yeah, there was one time that he shot his powers out. But let's get a full sunspot. I think I by the end of the season, we like will. the end of the season to do that. I either. Bet you that's what they're going to do 100%. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I really liked this, uh, this version. Oh, uh, you might be wondering where our third co-host is, Shaw. He's actually traveling right now, but he wanted – he sent me a little message. He said – have a great X Men episode. Please share that. I will. I I couldn't be there because I'm about to board the X Jet, and he wanted to say how much he loved the episode. So right now, Shaw is aboard the X Jet and he's flying over our heads. Maybe he's going to Connecticut, uh, to the to the X Mansion. But yeah, I just I really enjoyed that aspect of it. You know what's something I just found out, Tim? Did you realize the version of the older Jubilee? which uh, the character was the, the beta version named Absessa. Absessa? Yeah. I might be Absessa? pronouncing that wrong. Yeah. Did you notice that was the original voice actor from the 90s I didn't animated notice, show? I didn't notice when I watched the episode, but I was watching a video a review, the Screen Crush review this morning, and they brought that up. I'm like, well, that's just cool. Uh, it's and it plays into the themes of the episode about you know not holding on to the past and you know moving forward kind of stuff. So I really I really appreciated that. I mean, I mean yeah. I I applaud her for for saying hey this character needs to be played by an Asian actress because it's an Asian character. I understood that and I applauded her for that. But it was nice to see to to see her in in this episode. And yes. Just a really cool kind of passing of the torch kind of thing. Yeah, I, I love that. Allison Court was the original voice actor, and then she, like you said, passed the baton to Holly Chu. Um, Chu or Cho? Either one. But that yeah, was I a fantastic. Cho. Yeah, Cho. I loved all of that. And like you said, there's a bunch of Easter eggs and homages to the original series and the original comic books that a lot of these stories are based on. So I'm loving all of these things. It's like they're just combining. Uh, a ton of stuff it that I love. It was almost like this episode was like an like almost not only a love letter to those video games that that you know that we and other people loved playing, but also a love letter to the series mm. uh, itself. Yes. Because we, yes. we had we had the moment w where you know where um, all the X Men were, were Jubilee and a bunch of X Men were on Genosha. We had you know when Jubilee fought the Sentinels for the first time in the first the first episodes. So seeing kind of those greatest hits again uh, in, in a different kind of way was really, really cool. I really enjoyed that. A hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. And I, I really liked all of the Motendo stuff um, that, that we got in here. And the little, the spiral cameo, which we had gotten earlier in the season with Morph turning into spiral, raising his hand. We talked yeah, about that on a previous yeah, episode. Yeah. No so Morph seeing... this episode, which is sad. <laughs> Yeah, he was at the breakfast table. Which That's right. Actually, there was a funny, I would say the funniest moment of this episode was when he was like, oh, daddy didn't get you a pony or something for Magneto. And he was like, my parents were killed. And he was like, huh? That was the funniest <laughs> moment. I was it like, reminded, I knew it was it coming. It reminded me of the bit from Across the Spider-Verse with Ben Riley. Uh, oh, <laughs> right, like, right, right. I've got a tortured backstory. Yes. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was um, great so and, yeah motendo yeah. i think there was just a ton of great stuff there um the only downside i would say this was like my one negative was what i mentioned earlier i just wish it was longer i wish they had more time to expand upon it because number one we didn't get the rest of the cast except for at that breakfast table and scott and gene weren't even in it i'm glad they actually had a line where they're like oh they're off they're at the no u.n shit. Yeah, which is so going to be next I, week's episode. Ooh, I can't wait. Because, which is, that was a great next week's episode. It's about Genosha be, uh, being part of the UN. So oh, probably yes. should know that. Another yeah. thing I liked about this episode, which you can only do in a Mojo Vision type episode, is you can provide these kind of meta jokes. And there was a lot of because I watched the Mojo Vision episode as recently as last year because I was trying to watch. Oh, nice. I was trying to watch the whole series before this. I wasn't able to, obviously, but uh, got to season three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we got to see kind of um, these cool, like, um, 
kind of hints as to where it kind of like where the story has been so far and where the story is mm. headed um, with, you know, the different the different shows that Mojo shows uh, uh, shows Jubilee because we had Who's the Boss, which, you know, is a reference to, you know, um, obviously a sitcom, but a reference to the fact that, you know, the leadership has changed in the X-Men mm, with yes, Cyclops yes. and Magneto. And you have a different world, which is, you know, obviously a reference to the changing cast of the X-Men, which is something which was a hallmark of the of the Claremont run. Was the, the roster was always changing. And that's something they implemented later into Avengers comics, mm. uh, where they had an ever-changing roster and not a stagnant yes. roster in the comics. So right. that's why the, co- the complaint that the original Avengers not being an Avengers movie is just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> anyway, we should that's a top unpack time. that. Yes, we should unpack that in another episode. But yeah, yes. I'm, I'm right there with you. I I um, enjoyed this um, Motendo episode. Then there was the one that really stood out to me is the divorce court. Oh uh, yes, thing. with Scott and, and Jean. Yes, yeah, it's Summers and Gray. Are we headed for like are things heading towards kind of rough patches for Scott and Jean? Hmm. Well, we'll I want to know. Where did the clone come in? Because is he married yeah. to Gene or did he marry the clone? Is you know, we we know the baby was the clones. We know that. We know Gene did not give birth to the baby. So anything before that, I think we don't know exactly where she came in. But that is a huge, like the uh the juiciest drama that you could possibly have of did you marry this woman? How long have you known each other? And that shot we talked about in a previous episode of them on the opposite sides of the bed. Mm-hmm. It's just so great. Like, this is what I love about these X-Men stories. Uh, the yeah, human drama. Yeah, the X-Men stories are very much superhero um, soap operas. And yes, that's where they yes. that the best. Yes, and, which I um, love. Yeah, yeah. And I think we're taking a break from that drama for just for for this week to, you know, have a little fun and also go back to Storm, which, you know, we haven't we didn't check in with last week. So yes. um I think we're gonna probably get to that next week. Um because uh, with two weeks. Two weeks. There's uh, okay. yeah, next week the episode is entitled Remember It, and then the week after that is Life Death Part Two. So we're gonna get part two of that life death what it definitely leaves off on a cliffhanger, as we'll talk about here in a few moments. Yeah, um, yeah. Let's let's get into life, death, part one. Tim, what did you think? I want to say one more thing. I want to say oh, one, more, one thing. more thing about Motendo. Uh, one more thing about Motendo is the scene with the breakfast. You know, not only do we get a line that Scott and Gene are off in Genosha, but we also have a little thing with uh, with with the Magneto and Gambit and Rogue Triangle that they're still doing because you know magneto says he got rogue a, 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 a nice coffee with you know some sugars blah 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 blah, blah. and ah. rogue says i love sugar and gambit's like <laughs> you wanna give me some magneto's yeah. like no <laughs> no that was great that yeah. and then also jubilee's impression of magneto when when she suggested they go to the arcade and then she, it cuts to her in her room do you think the master of magnetism would be caught in a child's parlor or something? Whatever it was, it was a great impression of Magneto. Yes, but yeah, that the, that love triangle, we're going to be keeping an eye on that for sure yes. in the and upcoming Beast, episodes. And once again, an MVP because he drops <laughs> Jubilee's <laughs> full name. She should have some jubilation on her 18th birthday. Yeah. I'm like, that's great. That was, that's, that was that's great. great. Also, I want those X Men coffee mugs, the blue coffee yes. mug that we've seen. I have been thinking I want that. that since the show started. I'm like, I want one. I want one because <laughs> I remember. I remember this, this is a while ago uh, on Smallville when they had this cup, and Chloe had this cup in like I think it was season nine, and she had this cup. It was a blue cup, and it had the red S on, red and yellow S Ooh. on it. And I'm like, I want that. Make it. Do it. Did they ever make that? Did they ever end up making it? Oh, they did not. They Uh, did not. There's a there's a a missed opportunity. So don't miss out, uh, Marvel. Make the X Men mug so Tim and I can purchase it. All right, let's get into Life Death Part One, Tim. Like you said, you and I both have not had a chance to read the comic story, but I think by next week we will have it read. By part two, we will have it read. Part two. What did you think? For sure. What did you think about the animated version of Life Death? 
Um, I thought it was really good. I thought um, it really showcased the relationship between uh, Storm and Forge really nicely. Because because we obviously we knew we were building to that at the I think was at the was it the end of episode three and of last week. Yeah, because she was in the, in the bar and he came up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so to see that kind of being pushed forward was really really cool. And uh, a really standout moment for me in this episode was when you know S- Storm is trying to use her powers and she does her little her thing where she you know has her little like like wind and blo- I don't remember the exact line. Right. But she did that and it doesn't work. And then finally she's just like, please, when let me do this. And that was just like, no. Oh. That was a great, that line reading, that performance was also, I think, up there with the one where she first lost her powers. And she said, I can't feel the breeze. I yeah. can't feel the powers. Yeah. Both of those, it hit you. It made you feel for her. And it's like, at that moment, it became real almost like the whole time. It's like, OK, these are fictional characters. This is a cartoon. But like they as lose soon their as powers she... all the time. That kind of yeah. stuff. They always when, get them when back. she hit. Yeah. And we, we know that Storm is getting her powers back. Like there's oh, sure, no sure. That's, there's, there's no, no possibility. Yeah. No, but it's that I think goes to it's a testament to the writing and then also to the actor, to the performance that she gave where it just immediately you know that that ratatouille moment when the critic he eats the ratatouille and it pulls him back to his childhood is like Bruh! that's what yeah. i felt like in this in both of these times with storm it like pulled me i was like oh man this hits me in the chest um to us to a certain extent so yeah I, I really liked that and her her whole performance has been great she is the original storm actress uh, mm-hmm. from the beginning as well or from the from the first series so yeah i really am curious about their relationship and how far they're going to take it. You mentioned that screen crush recap, which I also had a chance to watch and they delved into the whole storyline of the, um, what's the demon's name? Um, adversary, Karen. the adversary. Right. They delve. There's a whole that like a years long story in the comics with the adversary. And I also, I wasn't familiar with that storyline, but them breaking it down on screen crush. I was like, man, they could do the exact same thing they did with the Madeline Pryor Inferno storyline where they could compress it into these two episodes. And I'm very curious because this one was a half an episode. The next one, part two, is a full episode. So Mm -hmm. if they do go that route where they put the whole adversary storyline in one episode, that's going to be two feathers in their caps for compressing something that is so uh vast and expansive into something that is easily digestible and then also understandable and so I, i'm very interested to see if they end up doing that but again with this part, half an episode i did feel a little bit rushed to the point where especially like I said when i watched it the second time i was like man i'm liking this i i like all the, the interplay between storm and forge and then that drama, like we talked about, that soap opera element of him revealing, I was the one who created the technology that yeah. hurt you so bad, that took your powers away. That was like, this is this is what we love. This drama yeah, is really so good. Don't, I don't remember if that was, because I haven't gotten to Forge yet in the comics in my read, but... Um, but I loved how, like, not only was did he create the technology that created um, the uh, what took her powers Taking away, the, but yeah, the cure, but the, like, like the bands, uh, yes, like right, the created inhibitors. That. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, it's strongly insinuated um, through Easter eggs, as you mentioned the Screen Crush review. They there are some pictures of with some people that Forge may have been been entangled with that created the sentinels mm, that was and, crazy to me yes yeah that was like, like that's nuts and mm-hmm. it, just, it just makes this character who like i mean I, like i said i don't remember from the animated series a ton but but seeing this character now it just gives a like gives him a tragic backstory and yes it was compressed and i remember when i was watching the motendo episode and i thought the motendo life death part like part one was just like an alternate title or something uh like 
like they couldn't decide on one or something. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, it was but, vague. Why, why does it have two titles? Yeah, I didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. And then and see, and I'm wrapping up Motendo. I'm watching on Disney Plus, and I'm like, this story seems to be wrapping up. Yet, yet it says my my phone or or, or where I was watching says uh, says there's like 12 minutes left. What's going on here? <laughs> and, and then we get life death part one i'm like oh it's a new it's another episode okay uh so i would have like made i would have appreciate i would have appreciated it i i agree with you i would have appreciated it if both of these stories would have had their own time to breathe yeah because it's like man i'm really liking this it's not there's nothing about it that i'm like oh this is a side quest skip this this is filler i'm like i want to know more i want more of the jubilee this, you know, putting aside her past and and more of the video game stuff. And then with Storm and Forge, I want a little bit more time for their relationship to develop because I don't know if you felt this way, but when he said, I love you, I was like, wait a minute, that's kind of quick, Forge. You're jumping the gun. Yeah. You're skipping some steps here. If you're courting someone, we both are married, and you say, I love you on the first date, and it's like, huh? Like that's kind of how I felt with this forge. That's how I met your mother. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> I I am very interested to see like how much more they go into that in the second part of this, um, the life death part two, because Storm is not. This is not her Clark Kent, right? This is not like her destiny is to be with Forge. She does have a relationship with him in the comics, but it's more of like one of her relationships she eventually has one with t'challa black panther she marries say, him destiny's t'challa. i I <laughs> wonder exactly i think they may do something in the future with her storyline because she ends up divorcing t'challa and now she's on mars in the current x-men stuff like she's on mars and and she's ho- trying to create a colony of, of mutants on mars so i wonder if future writers are going to come in and, and create a new uh, character. Actually, she is with a, um, a a guy right now who's like a human. He doesn't have mutant powers. So I wonder, you know, how much of that is going to play out. It's still currently being written. This stuff, Forge and, and these X-Men stories are from the 90s. It's like 30 years ago. So mm-hmm. she has a ton more growth to do. So very interested to see how that plays out. Um, but again, the the drama between Forge and Storm and then the adversary get out of here you demon like i wanted to know what is going on how are they gonna expand upon that character and doing her uh, having the storm actor be the voice of the adversary how much of that is in her mind and Mm -hmm. i think that's kind of foreshadowing what they're trying to do in the series by having her play the the character it's maybe there it's not an actual demon maybe it's, it's just something from her mind it's her inner demon and that's the way they're going to play it out. It's something from her, her, and they talked about on the on the Screen Crush video, like her inher- inherent mutant abilities in her DNA. Like her, that is something that's unlocked from her subconscious. So I'm curious to see how they do that. What do you think about the design of the adversary? Kind of looked like a owl hawk type of thing. Yeah, um, it, was, it reminded you know what it reminded me of. It reminded me of the owl from Avatar: The Last Airbender. Oh yeah. Okay, um, yeah. So, Which is like that camera the That's very camera. creepy. That like yeah. it yeah. I don't owls in general to me are kind of like they can put their heads almost turn them 360 and like they're, they're there's something very things. Yeah, there's something very yeah. crazy about yeah. owls uh which yeah. are kind of like to keep it comic books like the natural predators of bats and so the court of owls it just made total sense to be like why haven't we done an owl character before to match him up with batman so uh owls and also are very... also with watchmen the batman like character is Ooh, night owl yes yes so that's right it's interesting that life death part 1 was crunched into this in like into this section with where Nintendo. life death part 2 is getting its whole episode so i mean did the writers come up and like hey we want to do life death as a two parter and Disney's just like, no, you only have what ten episodes to mm-hmm. you know tell your story, and yeah. you already have you know your three parter at the end of the season. You don't right. get another two parter. Maybe right. they felt it would be too much. 
but they still wanted to do the Nintendo thing. So like, okay, we'll just make do with what we have. That's yeah. I'm that's the only thing that makes sense to me. But it's just, it's just yeah, it's just odd that Life Death Part One is like this crunched thing, and Life Death Part Two is going to be this whole episode. So right, because even when we saw the episode titles in advance. This was the one that a lot of people were pointing to, like, oh, life death. That's a big thing in the comics. And to have it part one and part two, I don't think we even looked at the Motendo side of that. We were just like, oh, life right. death, life death, life death. So yeah. I am curious to see how that plays out because besides part two of life death, like you said, there's a three-parter tolerance is extinction. That's going to end the, that's every episode in May is Tolerance's Extinction. Um, in April, we've just got Remember It and Bright Eyes. Those are the only two other standalone episodes. I wonder what Bright Eyes is pointing to. I'm curious, but hmm. we are going to find out. We're going to talk about it, Tim, here on This Comic Cooks. We'd like to thank you for joining us on another episode. What did you think about Motendo and Life Death Part One? I'm very curious to hear your thoughts uh leave us a comment down below let your friends know that we are here every week talking uh x-men 97 on this comic cook